this video, I'll show you what multi-stage sampling is. I'll go over some advantages and disadvantages, and a few real-life examples. Multi-stage sampling divides large populations into stages. This makes the sampling process more practical. Any combination of stratified sampling, cluster sampling, and simple random sampling is normally used. Let's say you wanted to find out which subjects US school children preferred. A population list, that is, a list of all US school children, would be almost impossible to come by. That means you can't take a sample of the whole population. Instead, you can divide the population into states and take a simple random sample of those. For the next stage, you could take a simple random sample of schools from within those states. Finally, you could perform simple random sampling again on the students within the schools to get your sample. Here's a few real-life examples. The Census Bureau uses multi-stage sampling for the US National Center for Health Statistics National Health Interview Survey. A sample of 42,000 households in 376 PSUs. A PSU is a probability sampling unit, usually a county or groups of counties, which are chosen in groups of around four adjacent households. The Gallup poll uses multi-stage sampling. For example, they might randomly choose a number of area codes, then randomly sample a number of phone numbers from within each area code. Johnson and colleagues' survey on drug use in high schools used three-stage sampling, geographic area, followed by high schools within those areas, followed by senior students in those schools. And finally, the Australian Bureau of Statistics divides cities into collection districts then blocks, then households. Each stage uses random sampling, creating a need to list specific households only after the final stage of sampling. Advantages of multi-stage sampling includes the fact you can use as many stages as you need to reduce the sample to the necessary size. There are no restrictions on how you divide the population into various groups, and it's a very flexible and convenient method. It's also very cost effective. One disadvantage is it's less accurate than simple random sampling, and the subjective component, that's where you choose how to divvy up the population into states or districts, can call the results into question. Due to this subjective component, the method does suffer from a lack of external validity on your research findings. If you found the video helpful, please take a moment to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.